Atmanirbhar Bharat. So I have chosen this topic because yesterday I have come across a question about Atmanirbhar Bharat, right? A prelims question where there were two options. First option was Atmanirbhar Bharat involves 20 lakh crores of fund which is around 10% of India's GDP, right? This was the first option. And the second option is it focuses on make in India. It focuses on make in India. The second option is it says it's based on make in India or it focuses on make in India by budgetary allocation only. So these were the two options. So here the thing which we have to know is the 20 lakh crores, the 10% of GDP, that money is not completely budgetary allocation. Only some of that money is budgetary allocation and the other is credit creation. Most of the initiatives in the Atmanirbhar Bharat, most of the initiatives in the Atmanirbhar Bharat scheme are loans related schemes. Government is not directly giving money from the Consolidated Fund of India, right? Most of the schemes that were initiated under Atmanirbhar Bharat are credit creation schemes. This point we have to be careful, right? The 20 lakh crore package which the government of India speaks about in that only some amount is out of the budgetary allocation. Only some amount is from budget or from the Consolidated Fund of India. The rest of the amount is credit creation, right? Loans to MSMEs, loans to farmers, loans to industries, right? So those loans don't come under the Consolidated Fund of India, right? It is the banks which give those loans to the MSMEs or the farmers. So the complete 20 lakh crores is not government's money. This point we have to be careful. Right? The, the rest of the points is Atma Nirbhar Bharat focuses on four L's, right? Four L's. We have already discussed about this. These four L's are land, labor, liquidity, and loss. L A W S loss. So these are the four things land, labor, liquidity and loss. So regarding land, land reforms, right? Focus on land reforms. See if any states have taken significant land reforms, right? Land leasing. Just go about the model land leasing act. There is an act called land leasing act, right? Just go through that. And also whether land is a state subject or a center subject. Land is basically a state subject. Right? He, in this way, all the dimensions with respect, with respect to land, we have to be thorough. And the second one is labor. So labor means codification of labor laws. That is very important, right? So codification of labor laws. What are those four laws? Are any new or good initiatives being taken in those four, right? One is on wages. One is on industrial relations. One is on social security. And other one is on occupational health and safety. So these are the four things. Just see if any new kind of workers are being included in any of the four things. Right. For example, if you take code on social security for the first time, gig economy workers and platform workers are also being given the social security. Right. So just go through those codification of labor laws and coming to liquidity. Number of initiatives were taken up by RBI as a part of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Number of initiatives, right? The interest rates or repo rates were reduced so much by the RBI, right? LTRO, long term repo operations. This was also taken up by RBI. Operation twist was also taken up by RBI. For NBFC's partial credit guarantee scheme was taken up. Just find about that. For MSME's emergency credit line guarantee fund. Emergency credit line guarantee fund. I've asked to see this yesterday also. So that was also initiated by RBI only, right? In this way, number of things were done with respect to liquidity, right? Go through all those things. And the last one is loss. The fourth L is loss, L-A-W-S, right? Essential Commodities Act was amended. Essential Commodities Act was amended to improve agricultural sector, right? Just see what are those amendments in that ordinance and 
contract farming was talked about right contract farming apmc acts were also amended saying that farmers need not sell everything to apmcs only they can directly sell to the private people that is contract farming let's go through what is this contract farming what is the model contract farming act which is there right tamil nadu was the first state to go for contract farming act right that was the first state to enact a law on contract contract farming right so in this way we have to cover all the things about land labor liquidity and loss because these were specifically mentioned in atmanirbhar bharat the dimensions which i have suggested to you right now try to focus or approach in these dimensions and also if you get any new dimensions just go through those also right? also the government or the, the prime minister in his atmanirbhar bharat speech spoke about five pillars right economy infrastructure demography demand and tech driven system right one of the component is tech driven governance system that means he was focusing on e governance so any e all the e governance initiatives of government which are very much in news we have to be thorough with them right all the e governance initiatives which are which may be related to law and order which may be related to women which may be related to ration cards right all the schemes all the e governance initiatives we have to be thorough with so that is one way how to prepare then demography demography means demography dividend right skill development challenges in higher education sector these areas we have to focus draft national education policy 2019 right so lot of scope is there in this atmanirbhar bharat right it touches almost all the sectors of economy so we have to be thorough with all these things right and then there is also a scheme under atmanirbhar bharat which gives free ration to 8 crore migrant workers you might have seen about this scheme right free ration to 8 crore migrant workers who don't have ration cards right this scheme is different from pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana that is different and this is different right pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana is basically giving more ration for ration card holders there are almost 80 crore ration card holders in the country for those 80 crore ration card holders extra ration is being given under pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana however this scheme which is different from anna yojana this is about giving free ration to those who don't have ration cards right those who don't have ration cards and those who are migrant workers and poor right these two are different if there is any statement saying pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana includes giving free rations to non ration card holders that is wrong garib kalyan anna yojana only deals with ration card holders that is one area where we have to be fo focused and msme and agricultural sector were very much focused in this atmanirbhar bharat right lot of initiatives for msme and agri sector just go through all those so overall object of atmanirbhar bharat is making globally competitive supply chains right making our local supply chains into a globally competitive supply chains and not import substitution right atmanirbhar bharat is not import substitution so all these points we have to know the 20 lakh crore is not completely coming from the budgetary allocation so much of that money is credit creation right so number of loans that was also included in this 20 lakh crore right that is the first point garib kalyan anna yojana is different from free ration to non ration card holders that is one point land labor liquidity loss and the five pillars right these are some areas how we have to focus atmanirbhar bharat we'll be discussing this in the coming days also like some topics related to atmanirbhar bharat now the second scheme is pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana matsya so this is related to fisheries fisheries development implementing ministry is ministry of fisheries and animal husbandry 
previously this ministry was under agricultural ministry this department but now there is a separate ministry that was created for fisheries and animal husbandry right so this is being implemented by ministry of fisheries and animal husbandry not agricultural ministry so what for is this scheme this scheme is for sustainable and responsible development of fisheries sector right this is for sustainable and responsible development of fisheries sector fisheries sector development and this is also related to blue revolution right blue revolution in india just like green revolution which is for agriculture blue revolution is for aquaculture right for the fisheries so to develop the fisheries sector and make the fisheries sector a complete value chain a complete value chain this matsya sampada yojana scheme is being implemented right developing fisheries sector means not only improving the production potential but the scheme also takes care of social physical and economic security for the fishermen this scheme also includes social economic and physical security that means pensions accident insurance all these for the fishermen are also included in this matsya sampada yojana right so this point we have to know this is not only about developing fishery sector but the social security for fishermen is also there under this apart from this the normal points employment generation of 15 lakhs boosting the investments boosting the exports all these are there right now two facts which i found out which are important for regarding fisheries for prelims is india is second largest producer of fisheries right india is second largest producer of fisheries india is not the leading producer of fisheries right it is the second largest first is china so this point we have to be clear and the second thing is there are two types of fisheries in india inland fisheries and marine fisheries right inland fisheries and marine fisheries inland fisheries means those fishes that are grown in ponds right lakes right so in this kind of atmosphere or in this kind of areas within the land these will be grown they are called inland fisheries marine fisheries means in the seas right in the seas so these two are two different types of fisheries that are predominant in india so which among this is mostly contributing to the economy in india it is the inland fisheries that is dominating not the marine fisheries right so in inland fisheries is mostly contributing to the economy compared to marine fisheries so these two trends we have to be thorough guys so india is the second leading producer of fisheries and inland fisheries is more than marine fisheries in india so this is about matsya sampada yojana and the third thing is police reform so we will just discuss an important judgment of supreme court which uh, happened in 2006 regarding police reforms so police reforms is important because this is a long pending reform and also recently we have seen many instances where custodial deaths are taking place right so in this context police reforms is very much important for us so prakash singh judgment prakash singh case this is related to police reform so this itself can be a question saying prakash singh judgment recently related to or prakash singh judgment in the match the following they can give they can ask prakash singh keshav nanda minerva mills and the other side three options and they can ask us to match it so we need to know the first thing prakash singh case is related to police reforms now we'll see the seven directives that were given by supreme court in this prakash singh judgment for police reforms right seven directives were given by supreme court first is to establish a state security commission what is this state security commission for to ensure there is no political pressure on the police to evaluate the performance of the police right for that state security commission has to be set up right this is the first directive second directive is ensuring security of tenure for dgp ensuring 
security of tenure for dgp for dgp minimum 2 years tenure has to be there this was also given as directive by supreme court the third thing is apart from dgp also other important officers like sps superintendent of police such kind of important officers also have to be given the security of tenure this was the third directive the fourth directive was to separate investigation and law and order These two activities should be separated for example the present one of the major problem is both investigation and law and order being taken up by police only the same the same police person has to be actively in controlling the law and order the same person is being assigned even for investigation this is overburdening on the police because of which efficiency is coming down so separating investigation and law and order this was also a suggestion or a directive given by supreme court setting up police establishment board this is the next thing now what is this police establishment board for any transfer posting or promotion of the police officers this police establishment board will take care right now promotion transfers and postings these are some ways how the politicians can affect the police right they can control the police so postings transfer and promotion need to be the decisions need to be taken by a third party that is better rather than keeping it in the government's hand that's why supreme court gave a directive for setting up police establishment board right and the next thing is police complaints authority also to set up a police complaints authority to register any public complaints about police right as of now presently we don't have a proper grievance redressal mechanism right if we are not happy with the service of the police we don't have a proper grievance redressal mechanism right so that's why the supreme court in 2006 in prakashing judgment gave a directive for setting up police complaints authority also and also a national security commission is also the supreme court has recommended what is this national security commission it is for central police organizations right police is a state subject under the state there is the police force but center also has some central police organizations right the central armed police forces are there right so all these will be taken care by national security commission just like the state security commission so these are the seven directives right so prakash singh case related to police reforms in 2006 supreme court gave seven directives one is state security commission second is minimum 2 years security of tenure for dgp in the similar way security of tenure for sp separating investigation and law and order setting up police establishment board which will take care of promotions and transfers police complaints authority for grievance redressal by the public and national security commission right? however unfortunately no one state also has followed all the directives of the supreme court right no state has implemented all the directives of supreme court some states have implemented some of the directives given by the supreme court right so this is one point we have to know and community policing is one term which we have to know community policing what is community policing community policing means police and public together taking up the policing activities right public cooperating with the police in the law and order issues so this is called community policing there is a community policing initiative which is very famous in tamil nadu it's an initiative of tamil nadu just find out what is that because this is important with respect to governance and the other important problem in police is which we all know shortage of police personnel many posts are vacant because of shortage of police personnel they are being overburdened right this is there and gender sensitization is also a problem in police organizations right gender sensitization making the polices or the police stations women friendly there the government is still taking efforts but 
there is a long way ahead yet right in this context also go through particulars of disha act disha act that was implemented by our andhra pradesh government right what is this disha act how is it different from the nirbhaya act in 2013 an act was passed called nirbhaya act right so that is the act and uh, there is another act for children called pocso prevention of children from sexual offences act these two are the acts that govern any crimes on women and children right apart from this now we have disha act also there are some strong punishments in this disha act which are not there in the nirbhaya act and the pocso act right we will take up in this topic in the coming days just find out what is this disha act right now apart from this prakash singh case there are other committees also that are related to police reforms there is soli sorab ji committee there is mali math committee second arc also suggested some and npa national police academy guidelines were also there right so if we not we go through all the recommendations of this police at least we have to know mali math committee means it's related to police law and order and criminal justice right if we know at least this much it's useful for prelims if you have time just go through the guidelines also right in similar way soli sorab ji that is also related to law and order and criminal justice right for prelims we need to just know the name of the committee and what is it related to and if possible some important guidelines also so this is all about uh, police reforms and recently a committee was set up by ministry of home affairs for criminal justice reforms right a committee was set up by the ministry of home affairs for criminal justice system reforms right so this is everything about police reforms and uh, the next topic is nia amendment act 2019 national investigation agency amendment act 2019 so initially this national investigation agency was set up in the year 2008 after the 26 by 11 mumbai terror attacks after the 26 by 11 mumbai terror attacks this nia body was formed in 2008 under a separate act called nia act right this is first thing we have to know right they can ask a question about nia where they can say nia is formed under indian police act or nia is formed under UAPA act unlawful activities prevention act that's not the case nia has a special act called nia act which was enacted in 2008 now that act is amended now in 2019 right so we have to know what are the new amendments that were brought right what are the new changes those we have to know right because the question in the questions they can give the old provision for nia right if we didn't update ourselves by going through this amendment then we may not be knowing the new changes right we might think those options are correct so that's the case and now one basic difference between nia and cbi right cbi is also an investigative agency in india now one basic difference between nia and cbi is to take up any case in any particular state cbi needs consent of the state government right to take up any case in any state cbi needs the consent of the state government however nia does not require any consent of any state right nia can take suo moto cognizance of terrorist activities in any part of the india right related to terrorism any activity that took place in any part of india national investigative agency can take it up right it need not require the consent of the state government that point we have to be careful right and also can nia take up any case no nia cannot take up all the cases in that particular nia act itself scheduled offenses were listed only offenses related to those issues only nia can take up cases right murder cases rape charges these kind of cases which fall under ipc they don't come under the purview of nia right nia's mandate is not for such offenses 
right that we have to know nas mandate is primarily for counter terrorism right counter terrorism there are specified scheduled offenses in the nia act only for those acts only for those acts or offenses nia will take up now the recent amendments that were brought is firstly list of those acts has been increased list of those offenses which nia can take up has been increased right not only counter terrorism but also human trafficking cyber terrorism counterfeit currencies illegal arms manufacturing all these were also brought under nia now right all these were also brought under nia now because if we see counterfeit currency illegal arms manufacturing human trafficking cyber terrorism these all are organized crimes which will indirectly help terrorism all these activities will indirectly help terrorism that's why these were also included under nia right this is the first point we have to know now the second point is jurisdiction of nia was also increased now recently we have discussed that just now nia can take up case in any part of india right in any state state's consent is also not required now the jurisdiction of nia was extended even outside india right even to outside india also so nia can take up cases even outside the india however three conditions are there first is not all cases as we have discussed before only those cases which are scheduled offenses under nia act only those offenses second offense should have been committed in india right that offense should have been committed in india only in that case nis jurisdiction will extend to other countries also and also this power of nia is subjected to international agreements and uh, laws and legislations of other countries right so no doubt nia has jurisdiction outside india also however not for all the cases only those cases that are listed and only those cases that happened in india and only and also the powers are subjected to international rules and regulations and that particular country's rules and regulations also so this we have to know so this is uh, about jurisdiction of nia and the third important amendment that was made is previously only state governments used to set up special courts for nia right after the nia does the investigation prosecution and submits the evidences and everything to the court a special court will take it up however previously those special courts were set up only by that particular state but now even central government can set up special courts right even the central government also can set up special courts for nia so these are the three amendments that were made first is list of cases was expanded right the domain of nia was increased trafficking illegal arms trading cyber terrorism counterfeit currency all these were also involved and jurisdiction of nia was increased beyond india however conditions are there we have discussed them and also central and state govern central and state government both can set up special courts now so this is everything about nia amendment guys and there is another portal called gem government e marketplace right gem government e marketplace this is also important for us so this we can be seeing uh, almost all all the time in business page so this gem is basically a public procurement portal simply saying it is a public procurement portal that means any central government body or any state government body any department or any ministry or any public sector company if they want to buy anything they use this portal they use this portal for official purposes so this is a one stop national public procurement portal right so gem is basically a one stop national public procurement portal who uses them central government and state government ministries
departments and public sector undertakings anyone can use this government e marketplace portal for public procurement right so this is this portal is under the control of ministry of commerce and industry right it's under the control of ministry of commerce and industry now another thing is this gm portal procurement was made mandatory for central public uh, sector undertakings right for the central public sector undertakings this gm portal was made mandatory that means central public sector companies have to compulsorily buy from the gm portal only if they want to buy anything let's say they need to buy some cement or they need to buy some steel or they need to buy any raw material or they need to buy any intermediary goods or finished products they should buy only through gem portal right so that rule was made so this gem portal major objective is to bring transparency and efficiency in public procurement right just imagine this is one area and a crucial area where corruption can take place where there is very much scope for corruption right if any official wants to do corruption during public procurement they may claim that they have bought 100 kg of cement but they might be buying only 50 kg of cement and the other money will be siphoned off by these corrupted officials right so to eliminate corruption and bring transparency in public procurement this portal was brought now this is in the news very much because a new rule has been included what is that country of origin right you might you might have seen this in the newspapers so the new rule that was made in this gem is all the products that are being sold in this gem portal they need to compulsorily display country of origin right from which country are they coming that country of origin has to be compulsorily mentioned by the products so this step was taken in the context of china india border dispute right because of china india border dispute this step was taken and also to support make in india initiative and atmanirbhar bharat also this country of origin tag was made mandatory right so to focus more on make in india products those products that are made in india rather than made in other countries like china right so country of origin should be there mandatorily for all the products that are being sold in GE. So these are some points about government e-marketplace. This is under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Right. So these are the governance topics for today. And now we'll take up the environmental topics also guys. So the first topic is Goga Beel. Goga Beel. G-O-G-A B-E-E-L. Goga Beel. So this Goga Beel is about Bihar's first community reserve, right? So this Goga Beel is basically Bihar's first community reserve. So this is basically an Oxbow Lake. We'll discuss in detail what is community reserve. So this is Bihar's first community uh, reserve, which was declared last year, right? So that's why it is important for us because they can simply ask Goga Bill recently seen in news situated in or located in, right? Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, or Assam, Northeast states can be given because we have another bridge called Bogi Bill Bridge in Arunachal Pradesh, right? So Bogi Bill is different and Goga Bill is different. Goga Bill is Bihar's first community reserve, right? This is basically an Oxbow Lake, guys. Oxbow Lake might have been covered for you in geography. Oxbow Lake is basically is formed during depositional phase of rivers when the rivers meander this Oxbow Lakes are formed right these Oxbow Lakes are in the shape of crescent we all have uh, we all might have studied this in geography right crescent shape crescent moon shape uh, lakes will be formed right because of depositional feature of the rivers and meandering right so this Goga Beel is one such Oxbow Lake in Bihar. And also this is a very important bird area. This is an important bird area. We also discussed about an important bird area three days back, right? 
So because of an oil leak in Assam, I have told about a wildlife sanctuary called Dibru Saikova, right? That Dibru Saikova is also an important bird area, right? Similarly, this Gogabi Lake is also an important bird area. And two important rivers also flow through this Gogabi. One is Mahananda River and the other is Ganga River. Mahananda River and Ganga River. Both these rivers flow through this Goga Bill, right? So now we will see what is this community reserve. Community reserve is one such protected area, right? It is a protected area under Wildlife Protection Act 1972. It is a protected area under Wildlife Protection Act 1972. What exactly it is? It is like a buffer zone. It is like a buffer zone. That means imagine there is a restricted and protected forest area. Right? Imagine there is a restricted and protected forest area. And imagine a wildlife sanctuary or a nat national park nearby. Now between this wildlife sanctuary or national park, between this wildlife sanctuary and this protected forest, the, meet, the intermediary region is called community reserve, right? It is like a buffer zone. It's like a buffer zone between protected forests and the wildlife sanctuaries. The region between protected forests and the wildlife sanctuaries, right? They are also called migration corridors also. They are also called migration corridors, right? They are like a link between wildlife sanctuaries and protected forests, reserved forests, right? In reserved forests or protected forests, no other activities are allowed. But in this community reserve, which is like a buffer zone, other activities are also allowed, right? So some important points here is private ownership of land is also allowed in this community reserve, right? Private ownership because I have seen a question where they said Goga Bill recently seen in news. First, uh, first statement is it is Bihar's first community reserve. That is true. Second statement is they said this is completely under the control of state government. That's not the case, right? Private ownership of land is also possible in this community reserve. Private ownership is also there. That means private people can own the land and some tribals also live in these regions. Human habitation is also there. Some human activities also take place here. However, preservation or conservation efforts will be more. That's why it's called community reserve, right? Now, who declares this community reserve? That we have to know. State government will declare the community reserve after consulting the central government, right? After consulting the union government, state government will declare the community reserve. So, in that way, Bihar's state government has declared Goga Bill as Bihar's first community reserve. Now, this is first community reserve for Bihar, but not the first community reserve for the country. There are already 127 community reserves in India. Right? There are already 127 community reserves in India. And Meghalaya is the state with largest number of community reserves. Right? Meghalaya is the state with largest number of community reserves. Meghalaya is also famous for root bridges. Just find out what the name of the trees, right? Roots and branches of the trees are used for bridges in Meghalaya. They are very famous and they have so much tourism potential also. Meghalaya has the number of highest community reserves and private ownership is allowed here, right? We have discussed this before. So this is about Goga Bill. Bihar's first community reserve. It's an oxbow lake. Oxbow lake means crescent shaped lake, which is formed because of river meandering and deposition of sediments. It's an important bird area. Mahananda and Ganga rivers flow through it. Community reserve means it's a buffer zone or a link between wildlife sanctuaries and reserved protected forests. Right? It's a protected area under Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Who declares this? It is the state government that declares the community reserves. There are already 127 community reserves in India. Meghalaya has the highest number and private ownership is also allowed, right? So these are some points. 
now we'll discuss about cites cites convention c i t e s this was also a news we have discussed this in brief before but some important points are there we'll take them up today so cites is convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna cites is convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna right this is important because illegal wildlife trade is increasing in the recent times right illegal wildlife trade is increasing in the recent times so that's why this cites agreement is very important for us in india we have a body to take care of illegal wildlife trade the name of that body is wildlife crime control bureau wildlife crime control bureau just find details about it we have already discussed this as a part of crash course just go through it so similarly cites is an international convention for stopping the illegal trade now whose initiative is it is it initiative of united nations no is it initiative of unep no it's an initiative of iucn it is an initiative of iucn these are the areas where they can confuse us guys right they can say cites convention is related to international trade fine and good then they might say this is a convention that took place in some unf triple c summit or some convention on biological diversity no it's an initiative of iucn right international union for conservation of nature this is the body that gives status endangered critical endangered status for animal species and plant species right so that iucn's initiative is this cites right exporting importing transshipment or possessing right exporting importing transit transshipment and possession that means owning all these are not or all these are prohibited for endangered species of wild flora and fauna so the cites objective is to prevent exportation importation transit transshipment and possession of endangered species right so this is the mandate of cites and this cites has three appendices appendixes right three will be there three appendices we already discussed what is schedule or appendix of a convention right these are basically the list of uh, species that are protected so there are three appendices appendix 1 2 and 3 appendix 1 consists of those species that are very much threatened to extinction right that are very much threatened to extinction similarly appendix 2 and 3 decreased level of severity compared to appendix 1 now recently two animals were added to appendix 1 right last year two animal species were added to appendix 1 one is indian star tortoise one is indian star tortoise and the second one is asian small clawed otter o double e r asian small clawed c l a w e d clawed o t t e r these names might sound boring and very different but yeah we have to just have an idea because indian star tortoise is there right so these two species were recently added in appendix 1 that means in that list of species which are threatened with extinction right so that's why these two species we just need to know what is the iucn status this is about cites convention a right? cites convention composite water management index composite water management index so this is published by niti aayog similarly healthy states progressive india healthy states progressive india that report is also published by niti aayog similarly delta rankings for aspirational districts that is also published by niti aayog in this way a number of indexes are published by niti aayog just go through all of them now we'll discuss composite water management index in this composite water management index niti aayog tries to rank different states based on their water management performance right it tries to assess 
the water management efforts in various states and give ranks to them right that is the purpose of this composite water management index now under this niti ayog says india is water stressed but not water scarce right this point we have to know because if there is any statement saying india is a water scarce country that is wrong india is still not water scarce india is water stressed however some regions in india are getting water scarce and these numbers are increasing but overall the country wise if we see still india is water stressed not water scarce this point we have to be careful and it divides the states into three categories himalayan and northeast states as one category non himalayan states as one category and uts union territories as one category right so the general trend we can see in the recent indices are they are dividing the states into two to three categories because we cannot compare andhra pradesh with meghalaya or tripura or mizoram right that's why states are being divided and rankings are being given separately now non himalayan states are usually the bigger states like gujarat andhra pradesh tamil nadu madhya pradesh up and all these states right so gujarat and andhra pradesh continue to be the leading states in this index right gujarat and andhra pradesh continue to be leading in this composite water management index right this point we have to know and some of the parameters on which niti ayog gives the rankings are <coughs> community participation how effectively community is participating in water conservation that is seen on farm water use that means agricultural water efficiency how efficiently water is being used in the agriculture that is also seen right and then how are the government policies and what are some initiatives launched by the government that is also a parameter and restoration of water bodies how effectively governments are trying to restore the water bodies this is also there so these are some parameters just we have to have an idea need not remember in detail about every parameter just we need to know what are the parameters right so this report or this composite water management index speaks about some important initiatives taken by different states first thing is mission kakatiya by telangana this index mentioned about that mission and the second thing is mukhya mantri jal swalabhman abhiyan mukhya mantri jal swalabhman abhiyan in rajasthan it's called musa musa scheme in rajasthan find about that also why did the index mention about that and the index also mentioned about samagra shiksha jal suraksha initiative samagra shiksha jal suraksha initiative just find out what this initiative is right this is an initiative of mhrd ministry of human resource and development samagra shiksha jal suraksha means there is a scheme called samagra shiksha abhiyan right there is a scheme called samagra shiksha abhiyan related to schools now this samagra shiksha jal suraksha campaign is to increase awareness about water conservation at the school level in the schools right for that this samagra shiksha jal suraksha campaign was brought so this we have to know this is an mhrd initiative and also jakni village in up jakni village in up this was also told by this index as a model village a model village for water conservation just find out what's so special about this jakni village in up and water is an important topic for this year's prelims guys right if we see with respect to monsoons perspective this year we got good monsoons right we got in fact somewhat excess monsoon just find out how much is it excess of lpa long period average there is a term called long period average related to monsoons jal jeevan mission is there find out what is this jal jeevan mission right jal shakti abhiyan is there a separate ministry was created called ministry of jal shakti what is namame gange mission different local 
water harvesting techniques in rajasthan water harvesting is called by one name in ladakh water harvesting is called by another name in andhra pradesh it has an another name right in northeast it has another name find out what are these local water harvesting techniques of every state right they can ask directly those things right so this is all about water guys and these are today's topics we see today's newspaper there are some topics which i found useful first is the political turmoil in rajasthan the rajasthan high court gave a judgment to the speaker to delay his judgment on disqualification right according to anti defection law who takes the decisions speaker takes the decisions but what did rajasthan high court do it asked the speaker to wait for some days and don't disqualify them now itself now the rajasthan uh, speaker has gone to supreme court citing kiloto holohan judgment kiloto holohan judgment what did this judgment say this judgment said speaker's decision regarding to defections comes under judicial review however judiciary will only enter after speaker has taken the decision but if we see the rajasthan case high court is coming into this de defections issue even before supreme court take uh, even before the speaker took a decision right that's why speaker went to the supreme court so here we need to know all these dimensions what is kilo to holohan what is this anti defection right separation of powers is also involved here what is article 212 just find out what is this article 212 right so this is all about that rajasthan high court issue and uh, defections issue second thing is mithila painting in today's newspaper mithila painting was also there this is also called madhubala painting right there is an article about mithila painting artist mask man of bihar so this mithila painting belongs to bihar this was already asked in prelims right similar to this paintings we have other paintings right this year jharkhand got its first geographical indicator and it's a painting sohrai korover painting similarly telangana got telia rumal geographical indicator In this way find out these paintings and all guys and uh, there was also a statement given by sebi security exchange board of india sebi chief has given a statement saying why not invite retail investors into government securities when we were discussing about gsex i told you that gsex are the papers which government gives to the government gives to the markets for money however government doesn't give this gsex directly to the people right it gives to the banks and that to rbi gives to the banks on the behalf of government but now sebi chief is recommending why not directly give this gsex to retail investors that means normal investors who are, who all invest in shares why not open this gsex for retail investors so the point we have to know here is gsex only given to banks till now right gsex not given directly to the people or they are not directly traded in share market that is one thing we have to know it minister spoke about data protection law in one of the meeting of g20 digital economy ministers meeting in one of the g20 digital economy ministers meeting our it minister spoke about data protection law so we have to know the uh, sri krishna committee right sri krishna committee that is related to personal data protection law that was the committee which made the draft find out what are the provisions of data protection law right and also world health organization was in the news like anything us was making so many allegations on world health organization right find out where is the headquarters of world health organization any recent initiatives taken by world health organization right what is this solidarity trail it's an initiative of world health organization right solidarity trail related to covid pandemic what is this solidarity trail of who just find out and pakistan afghanistan transit trade agreement this was also in the news there is a border between india and pakistan called atari waga border atari waga border right in punjab 
now pakistan is allowing afghanistan to take their goods and go to india through pakistan right through this border so afghanistan is getting a trade route to india so just find out what is this pakistan afghanistan transit trade agreement right and there was also a report by association of democratic reforms which was saying that 24% of rajya sabha members are, have criminal charges so criminalization of politics there was a recent supreme court judgment about criminalization of politics guys right there were some two to three important things that were uh, two to three important directives that were given by supreme court in the recent judgment on criminalization of politics right one of the provision is it asked the political parties to tell reasons why they have selected a candidate with criminal charges right they have to tell the reason knowing that they have criminal charges still why did they select those right in this way some directives were given by supreme court with respect to criminalization of politics just go through them and china bhutan border dispute china bhutan border dispute eastern part of bhutan china is trying to claim it now right an important forest sanctuary is there here sakteng forest sanctuary right the name is sakteng s a k t e n g sakteng forest sanctuary so this is located in bhutan that we have to know right the border dispute is also important but this we have to know for sure for prelims and minority affairs minister yesterday he made a statement saying after triple talaq law is being implemented there is 82% decrease in triple talaq cases so what is this triple talaq supreme court also gave a judgment on triple talaq and then the government passed a legislation on triple talaq are all the forms of triple talaq banned no only one kind of triple talaq is banned that is talaq e bidat right not all the there are other forms of talaq also those are not those are not banned by supreme court or those are not banned even by the government right only this talaq e bidat is banned that we have to know in this way some important points just get to know and there was a very good article about higher education reforms in today's editorial which is useful for mains also just go through it right and kashmir's internet connectivity issue right they don't have 4g connectivity even now they have only 2g connectivity now there is a judgment in the month of january which is called anuradha bhasin versus union of india right anuradha bhasin versus union of india this is about internet connectivity in kashmir now supreme court gave an interesting statement they are saying access to internet is important for fundamental rights because the kashmir people are not having access to internet fundamental rights are being violated but it did not say access to internet is a fundamental right right those two are different things so just go through that that, that uh, judgment however kerala high court said right to internet is a access to internet is a fundamental right under article 21 kerala high court gave a judgment like that just go through that judgment also right and there was also an editorial about separate high court for puducherry in today's hindu newspaper now here it's not that important for prelims but two important points here we have to know is union territories usually don't have a high court they will be assigned to some high court just like puducherry puducherry does not have a high court madras high court serves as high court for puducherry also 